Good evening and welcome to another edition of Talk Pixa. Tonight we have in our studio the PNG Tribal Foundation. With us, uh, Foundation President Gary Bustin and Foundation Director for Operations Michelle Hawafa. Gary and Michelle, welcome to Talk Pixa and thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's great to be with you today, Neville. Okay. The PNG Tribal Foundation, Gary, if you could walk us through who you are and what you do. Well, uh, me personally, my family history in Papua New Guinea dates back to the 1940s okay. when my grandfather, G.T. Buston, first came as a missionary. And then my uh, father and his siblings, uh, mostly in the southern and western highlands. Uh, my aunt is buried up in the highlands uh, after serving for 50 years. I was born in Garoka. I grew up in the highlands and then down in uh, East Taraka in Ley. And I uh, really developed a love for the people of Papua New Guinea. And uh, when I went back to America for school, uh, I just really thought that I needed to do something to help the people of Papua New Guinea, especially in the remote areas, because my childhood was spent uh, not in an international school. So time we go back to America, me look sabe la one way me can help him more. So I started an NGO called Samaritan Aviation and brought the float plane operation to the East Peak. That was a big stepping stone uh, in my life. And uh, from the time it started uh, in college until I left it in 2012, it was a labor of love. And now it's operating and saving lives. And uh, in 2008, I had a meeting with executives from Exxon in Washington, DC. And we were talking about them giving back to the country of Papua New Guinea and how they would do that. And that conversation uh, sparked the idea of the Tribal Foundation, an NGO that would work nationally in Papua New Guinea in health and education. And uh, so we started the Tribal Foundation in 2009. If there was one way or in one line, if you could describe what you, what you took from Papua New Guinea after growing up here, what would that be? As far as my experience, I think to really, uh, the one talk system, the idea of really caring about our brothers and sisters and, and having deep relationships. You know, lo Papua New Guinea, me plus I send down a story good true. Lo outside hop, also I go come hurry up now, walk in business now. All, plenty time only no sabe good, lo one one. All just I look him, that's all now. You know got strong pla, uh, relationship he stop. That's all lo PNG, you me say stop one bell now, you me say, sabe true. Uh, long old poro blow you me, now old family blow you me. I'm good plus something. So I think uh, this plus something I'm shooting bell blow me, and time we go, me no not lose him. Me must come back and help him. Okay. So after the float plane, behind this la walkie come up to East Peak, you've been working some of the work in behind this street? Long uh, tribal foundation, yeah. Uh, so first project, me pla walk him the tribal foundation, and me pla carry him all uh, beds, he come inside long maternity ward, long Palm General. Trangu all mama also carry him picking in and all by go sleep low floor. All no got space low bed long all. So me plak carry him 96 hospital beds, all nice plak true. One time corporate partners, Hill Rom, uh, Project Cure. And I plak walk one time gaming board, blow PNG. Um, Michelle, operations for the foundation. Um, you're based uh, out of Mo Port Moresby. Do you have any offices around Papua New Guinea? No, uh, so I'm the director for operations for PNG Tribal Foundation in country. I look after all our projects here that we're doing. Uh, we have an office in Port Moresby and also an office in Colorado where Gary is based. Okay. So Colorado, in the mention of Colorado, Denver, Colorado, um, could you walk us through the First Lady's Luncheon, which is something that, that you're very proud to be associated with? Mm. Well, uh, Project Cure is a partner of ours. They're based in Denver, and they help us get medical supplies. Okay. And uh, we bring over medical containers after doing an assessment of a health facility. Each medical container's value is about one million kina. So it's a significant amount of medical supplies. And I want to emphasize it's not just any medical supplies. It's exactly what the health uh, providers at that institution or in that area request that we bring in. Um, and so uh, each year, uh, Project Cure has what they call the First Lady's Luncheon, and they bring in the wife of a leader from a different country where they work. Uh, the Tribal Foundation is the partner of Project Cure for Papua New Guinea, but they work in 120 countries. And so uh, in 2012, 
I was at the First Lady's luncheon and was the First Lady of Mozambique, and she was speaking about her country. Suppose me pla karem meri blo PNG kam and by Wind Street. So me pla mas karem em kam na. This First Lady's luncheon will provide medical supplies coming back to Papua New Guinea. Uh, so we started working our team, uh, started working with um, uh, Miss Linda Babayo O'Neill and um, with the Prime Minister's office, um, and they agreed um, to, that she would come over and, and speak. And they call it a luncheon, but it's 1,600 people, 1,600 That's leaders. It's very big. And it's uh, something where, uh, you know, who's who of Denver, Colorado and of the state of Colorado comes to. So you have judges, you have congressmen, you have those kind of people. And um, so we were very excited to have her come across, but um, the event wouldn't happen without a sponsor. And the sponsorship is 100,000 US dollars. Um, it's for the event itself, you know, bringing that many people in, feeding them lunch, all the things that have to happen around that. And uh, uh, Exxon Mobil is a great partner of Tribal Foundation. And uh, they stepped up to the plate on this one and uh, funded the 100,000 US dollars for this event. Um, women's empowerment is very important to Exxon, especially here in Papua New Guinea, as well as the delivery of medical supplies and services. So uh, as Peter Graham said, this ticked two of those boxes for them. And so they were happy to be a part and uh, we're very thankful for them because without their support, uh, this event wouldn't have happened. Okay. And a result of that, uh, medical supplies. Uh, you mentioned that medical supplies that come over um, as a result of Project Cure are specific to the requests sent from um, hospitals here in PNG. Do we know which hospitals these are? Yes, uh, we're very excited. Uh, maybe Michelle, you can talk about that. Mm -hmm. And you're right, Neville, they're, they're very specific to those needs. So um, between Exxon and uh, uh, Ms. Babao O'Neill, uh, four hospitals have been chosen, and that's Port Moresby General, uh, Angar Hospital, uh, Tari and Daru. So we've done, uh, the, I think the Tari containers uh, will be sent very shortly, and we've finished these assessments in the other three hospitals. And what when you say containers, how big are these containers? 40 these, footers? Yeah, these are 40 foot containers. Okay. And uh, we work with our local partners to get them delivered on site. Um, so um, some of those partners are uh, con consort shipping has been very good. Uh, uh, Port Moresby, Barocco Rotary, Lay Rotary, they work with us. Uh, Mapai Transport and uh, some of the other transport companies. Uh, but these are big containers that uh, these guys, they you couldn't fit uh, a cell phone, a mobile phone in the container once they have it packed. It's okay. just packed to the gills. They know how to pack this. Yeah. Things. Okay. And, and the equipment, uh, is, is, is it just supplies or it also, is it also equipment? Yes, there's equipment depending on what is needed okay. at, the, uh, at the health facility. So sometimes it'll be x-ray machines or different equipment like that. Um, and so it's, it's very helpful to the health facilities because, for example, we have a container going to Papandetta General Hospital, and it is a operating light. Um, they've been struggling with their light for operating for a while. They had one and it would burn out after a half hour, and uh, then they'd have to use a dive torch for surgeries. And so we specifically got a big operating light that's uh, in that container. Okay, all right. Sounds very positive. Yeah. Yes, it, it is, and uh, it's like I think Christmas, when the uh, when the health facilities open uh, the containers, and and I want to emphasize this is a different program than some of the other ones where people just kind of imagine what may be needed here and they put it in the container and then ship it without a lot of follow through. Um, there's a lot of thought and there's a very strict process that we follow in order to get the right things in the right people's hands. Now, you've mentioned earlier um, a film, a film documentary that um, Tribal Foundation is working on. Could you tell us more about that? Mm. Well, you know, as, the, as an organization that's working hard to uh, lift the quality, quality of life for everyday Papua New Guineans, one of the things that uh, we realized early on 
uh, was we need to, to do some work on addressing uh, violence in society and especially violence against women. Um, but um, we've seen people that have done different things and uh, Tribal Foundation does things the Papua New Guinean way. Uh, but we bring in the top experts to help us do them. And uh, so that's what we've done with this documentary. Uh, the entire film is in Talk Pigeon. And um, it was shot over five weeks last uh, April and May. And uh, we were fortunate to have uh, two members of MTV be a part of the team that came over from Hollywood. And uh, Michelle is uh, the first uh, female Papua New Guinean producer on such a significant documentary. Uh, we've spent almost a million kina on the documentary so far. And um, it was a great experience, wasn't it, Michelle? Mm, it's an amazing experience, yeah. So it was about a year ago today that we um, traveled the four regions of Papua New Guinea. Okay. And um, what we've done with this documentary is taken a positive approach to uh, the issue of violence. And while that may seem contradictory, um, I think we thought it was very important to um, not alienate perpetrators, not to point the finger, but to say, we have a problem. We recognize that we have this huge issue in our country, which is hindering development, especially when it affects 50% of our population, or more when you consider all the children as well, and men who are part of, uh, part of the problem, part of the issue. Um, so we took a positive approach and the way we've uh, portrayed the documentary throughout is to say we acknowledge that there is a problem. We also understand that there are good things happening and good people in our country who are doing something to change that tide of violence. So we interviewed women who are survivors of violence. Um, one of them was um, a woman who was almost murdered because they accused her of sorcery. And uh, she managed to escape and her story is quite harrowing. So we do tell the story and we feel that's a very important part of the process, but we take it a step further and say, what's being done? What's happening in our country? What are all the good people doing to change that, that tide? And we talk to men who um, support the women in our country and who once were perpetrators and now are not and we hear their stories and we see how their lives were, were turned around and you know what it was like when they were perpetrators and how different and how much better it was when they respected their, their wives and their, um, the women in their family rather than were violent towards them. So we've taken that positive approach and we've taken a very inclusive approach where we say let's work together to be, to be the solution, not just be part of it, to actually be the solution and change our ways. And the name of the documentary is Senis Impasim. So it's a real call to, it's not just a documentary, Neville, it's, um, we show the film, we show um, an enacted part where it's a call to action for people to, to, to be part of the change. So we create that space where people can step up and say, yes, I want to be part of that solution. And then we give the educational material behind it to back that up. So it's not an, just enough to say, don't do it. But we say, these are some of the ways that you don't do it. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, um, as Gary mentioned, we talk about partnerships. It's such an important part of the way that we operate um, to engage government, to engage other NGOs and support the wonderful work that's already happening. You know, we don't want to dilute all our resources where we become ineffective, but really support everything that's happening already. So engage government, NGOs, um, um, just normal people that are, you know, just going about their everyday lives, changing and impacting the lives that are around them. Okay. Now going through making the, making the film, um, did you get a glimpse of what the core issues are and the reasons behind violence in Papua New Guinea or, or from the perpetrators? Um, it's such a broad, okay. broad subject, Neville. It's really difficult to get to pinpoint one reason. But one of the reasons that, uh, one of the people that we interviewed was a, a dynamic young Papua New Guinean man whose background is neurolinguistics. And he talks about using language to, um, to uh, deal with the, emo the, the emotion that comes with the violence and, and cutting it at that point. Um, you know, the other issues are um, 
lack of employment for our people, especially our young men who need to be able to support their families. Um, lack of support for our women. Um, um, Gary, maybe you'd like to speak to some of the issues. I think, um, you know, one of the things is violence is learned, um, but it can be unlearned, and especially for the younger generation. And so our film is for everyone, uh, but it especially focuses on younger men and focusing on how to inspire them to do better than maybe what they've seen modeled. Um, I think there's some contributing factors uh, in our culture here in Papua New Guinea um, that uh, have allowed uh, this problem to become what it is. Uh, but what we focus on is, is really an emotional connection with people and showing them how life can be so much better, that there is a positive way forward. And so that's one of the approaches that the film takes. It's, uh, we didn't want people to watch a film and see another uh, group of abused women. I think you know, we're all clear that there's a challenge here. Uh, but what we wanted to do was to inspire people to do better, and especially the younger generation to say, well, maybe I've seen it done that way, but it would be better if we did it this way, where we show respect in our communities, where we get along, and where we don't have this abusive uh, type of issue. The other thing is, uh, you know, a lot of times people will say, oh, it's, it's, it's everyone's involved. Well, no, they're not. There are a lot of good people in Papua New Guinea, a lot of good men who are doing good things, and, and not only in their own life, but also in this area, and speaking up, and, and we highlight some of those men. We want a positive message, and it's not just a feel-good thing, like Michelle said. I mean, we, we look at the darkness of it, uh, but we do it uh, in PNG style, which is storytelling. People tell their stories, and it's interesting, Neville, when you make a documentary, as I'm sure you well know, uh, you don't know exactly where it's going to end up because it's not something that you script and people act out. It's people in real life telling real stories. And uh, we were able to get so many great stories that we actually extended our time in uh, shooting the film. And uh, uh, Pogra Remediation Framework Association was the one that funded initially uh, the beginning of the film. And, and we would like to thank them uh, for that because uh, this is something that they saw that was important. And so we brought a team in from Hollywood uh, that make world-class documentaries. And we shot with a red camera, which is what they use for feature mm -hmm. films, as you know. And uh, the, we wanted to show the beauty of the country while discussing this issue. And they, we were up in Simbu, and I just remember some of the beautiful mountains and mm -hmm. we, you know, waterfalls and people walking on the trails. It, was, it, it really captures the beauty. Then we went to Sipik, um, and we, we showed the people in the river and fishing and catching fish and the New Guinea Islands and you know all four regions of Papua New Guinea. So when people watch the film, it's, it's very entertain, entertaining visually, mm -hmm. but it also captures the heart and the mind. So Senison Passan, when Pasen. does Papua New Guinea get to see you? Well, we um, debuted the trailer okay. a couple of weeks ago at the U.S. Women's Forum. Okay. And um, I think there was not a dry eye in the room, sure. and it was just the two-minute trailer that we showed. Um, as Gary said, there is such a deep emotional connection to it immediately. Um, and we do showcase the beauty of PNG. It's, a, it's, it's stunning visual imagery and powerful storytelling. And uh, we really think it's going to be a game changer, not just in our country, but also in our region. Um, but uh, we're almost finished. Um, editing took a very long time because it was filmed in Tokpisin. So our, um, our team in LA don't speak Tokpisin <laughs> very well, <laughs> or not at all. And um, so we had to trans transcript the Tokpisin into English and have that edited. So it's taken quite a bit of time. Uh, but we should be finished by May. And uh, we've decided to um, launch it in September after the Pacific Games because there's a lot of noise happening around that. So we really wanted uh, the launch to be quite, a, quite an event where it captures people's attention. Okay. And the goal for the, uh, for the launch, it's, it's, um, it's a national campaign uh, called Sani Simpasin. Mm. And um, as you know, m most Papua New Guineans live in the rural areas. They're not, they're not going to see the film in a theater. Mm. We have to take the theaters to them. And so um, we'll be showing it on MTV and we'll be showing it, Air New Guinea wants to show it uh, on, the, on their airplanes. And uh, we're getting a lot of uh, interest 
from corporate partners and uh, from the Department of Planning. We're doing a partnership with them to have it be part of the uh, uh, national strategy for sustainable and responsible development. Yes. And um, so we're very excited about that. Um, but we're going to take the film out into the, uh, into the rural areas. And uh, when I brought the float plane operation into ECPIC, I said to all the stakeholders, this is your airplane. It's not our airplane. This is your airplane. We'll all work together to serve the people. And that's the same approach with this film. So we'll be working with the churches. We'll be working with other NGOs. We'll be working uh, with uh, different government agencies that work here in Papua New Guinea, with the national government, with the provincial government. Um, it's it's going to be, you know, whoever is really strong in a region, that's who we'll be working with to have the film uh, shown throughout. And like Michelle said, uh, there's the documentary, which we reduced 17 hours of footage down to 43 minutes. So that was a lot of work. We're on the 20th cut right now. Um, and then there's a educational component. Um, I don't think before uh, Papua New Guineans in rural areas have had any education on conflict management, especially couples. And so that's something that we address in the education component. And then there is a two minute acted out piece, which will be shown over and over, not only with the film, but on television. And, um, and then um, there's a call to action. And when people uh, sign a document and they agree to be a part of this change, then they'll get a bracelet that says Senus Impasin, which is uh, featured in the two minute uh, part that's acted. And we shot it up in a village in Garoka. Okay. And um, we shot with helicopters. I mean, it was Hollywood come to Garoka. We, we partnered with uh, Round Round Theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pacific Helicopters as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Pacific yeah. Helicopters yeah. worked with us and, uh, and Governor Julie Sosa. Mm -hmm. And in Anga Province, we worked with Governor Epitus. And uh, so the areas where we're going to start rolling the film out will be in NCD. We're going to be working with Governor Parkop. Right. And then Anga Province and then Eastern Highlands Province, and also in Oro Province, and uh, potentially in Millen Bay. So we want, you know, it's, it's a big task. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but it's, it's time for us to have this conversation as a nation uh, on a national level. Mm -hmm. Because when we start thinking about things and paying attention, then the change start to happen, starts to happen. Mm -hmm. So I always say it takes a long time to turn a big ship. But if you just start, the process will follow through. And there's a lot of people working on this area. We, we, we don't feel like uh, you know, we have a corner on it. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we feel like we do have a strategic tool that everyone can use. And we want to work with everyone who's working in this area because Papua New Guinea can be so much better than it already is when we're able to get a handle on this issue. Um, but we also have a very strong group of international partners. Um, one of them is uh, Children's Hospital Colorado. Uh, they uh, have a budget, an annual budget of two billion dollars. They're a very big organization, top ten children's hospital in the United States. Uh, and they're coming to Papua New Guinea to work with us um, to help with pediatric health. So we're very excited about that. Uh, but the strength of the Tribal Foundation is partnerships and uh, what we do is we cut new paths. Uh, what we like to do is we like to do a project or a group of projects that are examples of what can be um, and help people think a little bit above where they have been thinking or what they have experienced. Um, you did an excellent story on uh, One Piece and uh, thank you for that. Uh, we really appreciated that story has been far and wide uh, seen here in Papua New Guinea and internationally. Um, but you know, it was this idea that these street children have value mm -hmm. and uh, we must look after them, we must give them opportunity and let them be a part of the bright future of this country. And um, what the Tribal Foundation did in that area by bringing the stakeholders together, the service providers at Parliament, uh, along with uh, Ms. O'Neill, um, and the Department of Community Development um, was really to spark people's thinking in that area. And, and um, so that's one of the ways the Tribal Foundation works. And then we work in very practical ways, putting medical supplies in the service providers' hands. 
and helping people with thinking, you know, with the, uh, with the uh, film coming up, you know, helping to change mm -hmm. thinking uh, in, in a progressive way for the country. We, we have a dream of what Papua New Guinea can be. What is that dream? And that dream is a place where young people have opportunity to get education, where families are safe. We don't need all these wires and fences, you know. This is paradise. Uh, we need to get past that. A place where people have opportunity and freedom, uh, not to be uh, like the Western world, but to be like Papua New Guinea can be. With our culture, very, very rich culture and heritage. And uh, there are some good things that are coming in from the Western world. There's also some very bad things. Uh, our dream is for Papua New Guinea to reach its full potential in what it can be as a country uh, in the unique way that it is. True. Michelle, any final words from you? It's a great honor to be working for the development of our people, Neville. This is, this is our passion. We do it because we love our country, we love our people, and as Gary said, we really want to see the best for our people, the best health care the best education, the best services, and in a really, truly Papua New Guinean way. So we're working hard towards that goal. Um, we work as a tribe. We work with different people. We support organizations that are already doing the great work. We feel that's very important not to go out on our own, but to support what's already happening. And we believe that um, as we work together, we will see that change. It is going to happen, and it will happen in our lifetime.